Hello and welcome to point nine or chapter nine of our Serendipity Bookseller C++ software development project. And in this part, we will be dealing with the, everyone's favorite subject of C++ and that's, of course, pointers. So for this chapter's assignment, we will enhance the program point of sale and reporting capabilities. We will allow multiple transactions. Right now, we can add a book and uh, it will process the transaction. We, then we can get another one and it will process that transaction. But uh, what we want to do is basically allow multiple books to be purchased instead of one at a time. We will enable automatic lookups. The cashier function currently asks the user to enter the ISBN number, title and price of the book being purchased. We will modify function so that once the user enters the ISBN number, it automatically looks up the book title and price because we will add it into our arrays. It can do so by searching for the ISBN number in the array. Uh, if the function cannot locate the ISBN number uh, in, the, in the array, then it should display a message indicating so. And it should ask the user if he or she wants to re-enter a number and let the user enter a number again. And once the book's data has been retrieved, the function should check the quantity on hand array and determine whether there are enough copies in stock to fill the order. If so, the function should subtract the number of copies being purchased from the amount in the array. And if there aren't enough copies in stock, then the function should display a message indicating so. And then there's the report menu. Currently, when the user chooses an option from the reports menu, we only have stop functions, uh, but we will, we will do the following. The report listing function should display a report listing all the books in the inventory. The wholesale function should display the reported list, the following data, like title, ISBN, and so forth, and a wholesale constant. The report should display an appropriate title that includes the date as well. And the last line of the report should give the total wholesale value of the inventory. The retail function should display similar like the wholesale function, but for retails, retail prices. And the quantity function should display a report that lists the uh, ISBN and quantity on hand. And the list should be sorted by quantity on hand in the descending order. And the function should fill the screen with data and then ask the user to press a key to continue to the next screen. The cost function should display a report that displays the uh, ISBN number, title and so forth. And it should display the appropriate title that includes the date. And the function should also fill the screen with data and then ask the users to re uh, press a key to continue. And similarly with age function, we display the information and ask the user to continue as well. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is work on the cashier module. So uh, uh, we will uh, we will make it so we can uh, we can order more than one book. Uh, that's why we will change everything as we have here into uh, using arrays because right now we basically order a book and we display the bill or the, the receipt. Then we ask if you want another book uh, and we can do that. But uh, we don't have the option to, re, uh, to show or order more than one book on the same receipt. So we're going to change that using arrays. Now in this exercise, uh, this is going to be part one uh, because this is going to be a little longer. So I'm going to split it in two. Uh, so if you want if you're interested in pointers, then you have to go to part two because in cashier module, we will not be using any pointers just yet. So in part two, we will when we are doing the reports. All right, so that being said, let's do the cashier module. Actually, before I wanted to do go to inventory menu 
And uh, over here, when I'm adding the book, I notice there's a lot of spaces. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete all these extra spaces when it's asking me to add a book into an inventory just for the uh, sake of a nicer display. Now record was entered, we leave that. All right, that's all. Now, now really let's start with the cache module and it's gonna change quite a bit. Actually, most of it will be changed. So um, I'm going to actually delete all this and uh, I'm going to declare new variables because a lot of them will be uh, will be arrays or most of them. So we will do the constant integer size and make it 20 and we'll extern all the uh, arrays and I have the, we did that last time in the last video. So I'm just gonna copy paste the uh, the extern statements from the inventory menu and copy paste them right here. Okay, so that's my uh, those are my arrays. Uh, here's my uh, void cache here. The constant stays, and now let's declare the variables within it. Now, remember we are processing or more than one book. Uh, for the same order so we need uh, we need arrays for each order we are processing these arrays which i actually pasted uh not inside the case here it's supposed to go above it obviously but uh each order since we can hold mo multiple books on one receipt we we don't know how many but no more than 20 we will simply uh, create a race for for the order as well. So um, the first one will be string ISBN number and size. Now, just to clarify, these arrays are our inventory. That's the books that are in our inventory. The arrays I'm creating now are for particular order that we will be doing. So these are not the same. So we'll string this title again size. We'll need the quantity. So it's gonna be quantity of books that we are ordering for uh, uh, each title. And uh, we will do double, which is the unit price of the book. And uh, since we are, uh, th the way it's going to work is uh, we'll order a book, let's say title one, and then it's going to ask us, do we want to add another book to the order? And if you say yes, then we'll go and add another book. So we need a subtotal and a running total as well to keep track of uh, how much is being, uh, uh, how much the order is being. So, uh, we have the unit price, so we'll need the double subtotal uh, size. So these are our arrays for the order. We'll need a string, I'll just call it transaction date, which is basically our date. I think that's what it's called right now. Yeah, I'll just call it transaction date. I think it's more clear what it is. Now we'll the order, order, sales tax we'll have a double like I said running total and we'll have our grand total which is gonna be all the books all the costs for all the books added together so it's gonna be double I'll call it grand total now we need to make sure that uh, in our inventory, we have enough copies of the book. Like, let's say I have title one and I have five copies in the inventory. I won't be able to order six, but I also won't be able to order less than one. Right. So uh, we need an integer that will kind of validate it. So we will do valid quantity. And we will need um, a choice from our menu. Because we will be asking, do you want another transaction? Yes, no. 
So uh, it's gonna be character, I'll just call it choice. And I'll initialize it to Y. It's gonna be changed uh, throughout the program anyway. And since we are working with uh, two sets of arrays, one for our inventory and one for our uh, order, I need uh, some counter that will match the indexes for uh, both of the uh, uh, both of the arrays. So uh, integer counter, I'll initialize it to zero. And um, there's gonna be a message throughout the program that's gonna be asking, do you want another transaction? Or if you order, uh, if you enter a wrong ISBN number that doesn't exist in the inventory, because that's how the order is gonna be. You, the user enters ISBN number, we will search our inventory, see if the ISBN number even exists. And if it's, uh, if it's a wrong ISBN number, we will ask the user to re-enter it. So the message, uh, uh, we will be displaying error messages throughout the whole program and they'll be all the same. They will have some very similar elements and they'll be basically asking, do you want another transaction? Do you want to re-enter another ISBN and so forth? So we're gonna create a function for that because uh, I don't wanna be copy pasting the same thing all over the, uh, all over the application. So the only thing that's gonna be changed is the message. So I'm gonna create a variable called message and you'll see how it works uh, in just a minute. Okay, so um, those are our variables. So now we can go and uh, process the transaction. Now we will not, not use the do while loop anymore. We will do a while loop and we will do a while loop while the choice equals y or the choice equals lowercase y. In other words, if the user chooses to continue, then we will process another order, except obviously this is double equal. So uh, as long as the uh, user wants to continue, we will process another transaction. So process another transaction. And we can display the header and uh, cashier module. Since we are going to be using, uh, well, let me see how that actually goes. We will enter the date. Now this is now trans date. That stays the same. But now we are, we are not entering every book manually. We are pulling it from our array, from uh, from our inventory. So we don't need these anymore. We don't need we don't need to enter title or price or anything uh, like that. So instead, we'll enter the ISBN number and search the inventory whether the book is in stock. So we will do C out, uh, enter ISBN, and we will do get line C in and we will pass it into R and this is the, remember, we are now having multiple books so we need to work with the uh, arrays for the order, so which is the ISBN. Now ISBN, the top one here, that's our inventory ISBN uh, array, but we want this one because just for the order, we will simply, the whatever the user enters, we will pass it into our ISBN array for the, for this order. It's counter like that. Okay, so uh, we have that. And after that, uh, we will be looping through our array until the end of the array. If the if the if we reach the end and uh, the ISBNs don't match, then the ISBN or the book doesn't exist in our inventory. If we reach it uh, and the book exit, uh, exists, then we will exit the for loop because we found the book that we were looking for. So I'm gonna delete the calculations as well. This I will keep because we will leave the formatting uh, for the for the display. So we will do the for loop for integer. I'll call it index equals zero. 
index is less than size and index plus plus uh, plus plus I meant and in it we'll compare the ISBNs from our inventory with the one that we entered so if the ISBN number and that's the counter index or the counter uh, element if that matches the ISBN from the inventory which uses the for loop for the index and it's called index so if these two match then we have our we have our book that we are looking for so we can display C out uh, title and we can display the book title from the inventory all right so an end of line a new line and the next one uh, we can display the price actually I should have left uh, let me just type it I'm not even sure which one is of, the, of that I'm going to be using this is going to be completely different uh, so we will do fixed we will do show point because we are it's going to display the price so we need the set precision of two and we will display price and we will show the retail that's our array for the uh, from the inventory for the for the prices so we will show that as a price because remember the index is from the for loop so and it matches the counter so it's the same it's, a, it's kind of parallel all right so we have that and now we have to kind of assign uh remember our for our order that we have to keep track of so we will do unit price for the counter and we'll simply assign it whatever that book is co uh, whatever it costs in our retail array in the index except it's retail all right so uh, it's, we need the title which is the again the counter and add we will assign the uh, title from the book title array and now we need to we have we found the ISBN we found the book but we have to make sure that we have enough copies for the order so we will assign a valid quantity is whatever is available for us which is the quantity on hand array of the index all right so uh, now let's check it first of all if the quantity is at zero or less well, it won't be less because we won't go we cannot have less than zero books um, if it's zero then it's out of stock we can do it right here if the valid quantity equals zero means we're out of stock so we will we will display a message see out and it says the book is out of stock and uh, some new lines and we don't have to do anything else there is no point for us to do any calculations or display anything else so we will simply uh, return we will exit the whole thing display the message and go back to our main menu no point of doing anything else all right so um, now if it is a valid quantity or if it's not zero if the, if the quantity in our index inventory is uh, not zero it means there's some uh, books left in the inventory we will ask the user to enter how many books he or she wants to purchase so enter quantity of book all right like that and we will do c in and it's gonna be the quantity books we will pass it into our array for the counter for the order not from the inventory this is for the order again all right so uh, we have that 
And now we have to make sure that the user didn't enter some crazy value, like, uh, I don't know, negative five or something. So we will do a check on a while loop. So while the quantity books that the user entered is less than one, because we cannot order less than one box, or if the quantity of books of the counter is greater than uh, the valid quantity, in other words, if the user tries to uh, buy more books than what's in an inventory, let's say there's five books in the inventory and the user tries to order six. So if this is true, then that's an invalid order. We cannot process that. So we have to let the user know. So we will simply do if the uh, we will sim display two different messages for each. If the quantity of books uh, for the counter uh, is less than one, then it will display a message uh, that says. Uh, please enter a valid quantity because user is trying to order zero or less which is un uh, we cannot process that so we ask for user to enter a valid valid number else then we know that the user tries to order too many books so we will simply do c out and something like sorry insufficient quantity in inventory and that's it that's our that's our check and uh, after the message we'll ask the user to re-enter the quantity so we will do c out actually i'm just gonna copy paste this because this is what the user is gonna enter we will ask again for the quantity and we will paste it into our quantity books and again it comes over here and checks whether the user entered something normal a normal number uh, so uh, we have that so when we come after the while loop we know that the user uh, entered valid quantity so we can process it and uh, the first thing we need to do we need to deduct the other quantity the let's say we have five books in the inventory user order three so we need to deduct three from five because now we have only two books in the inventory. So we will do quantity on hand with the index minus equals quantity books that the user ordered. So that updates our inventory uh, quantity. Next thing we need to do, we need to add uh, increment, <coughs> increment the counter. Because now, if the user wants to enter another book, we need uh, we need to move to the another index in our order array. So we'll add a counter plus plus to add, increment the counter. And next, we will do our message. Remember about the uh, the error messages. So I'm assigning a message that will say. Uh, something like add another title to this order asking the user if he's done ordering or if he wants another another title to add to his uh, order and now it's time to actually create the uh, function so we will uh, and the function will return whether the user wants or doesn't want another order it will return y or n so our choice will equal and I'll call the function another transaction whatever the another transaction function re, uh, returns will be passed to choice and in uh, another transaction we will pass the message as an argument because remember that's the thing that will be changing across uh, these error messages so um, let's do the uh, another transaction so it's gonna return a character y or n another transaction and it accepts string uh, message it accepts in this case the message would be uh, what does it say 
uh, add another title to this order will be passed as an argument here. So we will do character choice, uh, choice. Now remember these variables are in, inside of this uh, function, so they are not available uh, anywhere else in the program just for this function. So they can have the same name and they're different variables than uh, these. Uh, so uh, you have to keep that in mind. The only thing that will be returned from this function is y or n for yes or no. So we will do, we will display the message, the message that is being passed as an argument. All right, uh, so that's our message that's being passed as an argument here. And the next thing we will display C out, uh, enter or Y for yes and for no. All right, so that's gonna be, so it displays do you want to enter another transaction? Yes or no? And uh, we will ask the user to enter the choice. Uh, so enter your choice. And we'll uh, collect the choice and pass it into a variable choice. Which is this variable here that we declared. We will uh, do the ignore. And uh, so now the user entered something. We don't know if it's uh, if he entered Y or N. So we have to validate it again. Uh, so it's gonna be while our choice doesn't equal Y, or capital Y. And if the choice doesn't equal lowercase Y, but also if the choice doesn't equal capital N and lowercase n if the choice not equal lowercase n because these are the only valid choices but if it user entered anything else then it's an invalid invalid input so we will do C out and it's gonna say uh, please enter y for yes or n for no and we will ask for a, I'll do another line like that. We will ask for a, another input. So we will uh, display the message, the same message that we passed. In other words, it will again ask, do you want another transaction or do you want to add, what did it say, another title? So we will display the whole thing again. So message will be displayed. And then once again, we will let the user enter his choice and ignore. And uh, this will be looping until user enters Y or N. And when he does, it won't, it won't accept anything else. When, it, when the user entered Y or N, we can return our choice and that will be paste uh, or passed into our choice over here into another transaction. Now, if you see, it says cannot resolve symbol in another transaction, that's because the function is defined, but we don't have access to it because we don't have the prototype. So I'm going to cache here a uh, header and I'm gonna do the prototype there. So I'm gonna do another transaction and I'm gonna pass the string. And I'm gonna add the uh, std string to it. Uh, so uh, now when I come here, you can see that there is no error and the uh, function will work okay. So that's our function. And now uh, we have the quantity on hand updated. We display, uh, we, we get the choice. So we'll, let's just add another like a blank line. And remember, this is the, if the ISBN numbers match, in other words, the book was found and the user entered Y or N. So now we want to go back here and see whether the user wanted to exit or not. If so, if user entered Y, 
we'll simply go and enter another uh, transaction, another title, or let the user enter another title. So we will break away from the for loop because we don't need that anymore. We are uh, we found the book and we want another transaction. We don't need to keep searching for uh, for the same book. All right, so we will break out of that. However, this you can see it's the uh, if statement. If the book, if the ISBN number numbers don't match, uh, then we need to check if we are at the end of our array. Because if we are, then we search all the books and the book simply doesn't exist. So we go to else if if the index is now size minus one, which is the end of the array, then we will do C out. We searched all our inventory and didn't find it. So we, the ISBN number was not uh, found. And again, we will assign a message and ask the user if he wants to re-enter another number. So if, if yes, it will let the user enter another ISBN number and search the inventory again, or N, meaning now he's done with the transaction completely. So re-enter ISBN number, question mark, and the user will enter yes or no. So we will again capture that into our choice um, that comes from the another transaction function and pass the message in this case it will the message says re-enter isbn number so uh, this is the uh, end of the for loop okay so we're good and um, after we, the after we exit the for loop we can do our c out another line another blank line and this ends the while loop and while loop. I'll just mark this as a end for loop like that. So if the user enters n, which doesn't equal y obviously, then we done we're done uh, entering any books and now we can display the receipt. So but the only time that we want to display the receipt is if user actually entered anything at all. Because let's say user entered a wrong ISBN number, but then he's like, oh, well, that's what I was looking for. I don't want any more transaction. So there's no receipt to actually display at all. Uh, so you want to display a receipt only if the actually anything was entered into our, into our arrays for the order. So uh, over here, I'll come and I'll do an if statement. And to, to see if uh, anything was entered, we simply have to check if the counter is greater than zero. Remember, counter was initialized at zero uh, over here, and it's being increased every time uh, anything is being added and the inventory is being updated. So if it's one, then we know that one book was entered. If it's two, then two bo books were entered and so forth. But if, so in other words, if it's greater than zero, then uh, we have a receipt to actually display. So I'm gonna uh, copy paste this whole thing, this whole receipt, and uh, I'm gonna delete this. So if counter is greater than zero, what do we do? We display the date which is going to be trans date now. We display the quantity, uh, like for the header, we display that. So now we have to display each order. So in order to do that, we'll simply use a for loop again, because each order will be on its own line. So for integer i equals zero, and i is less than the counter, I plus plus. So we have the uh, uh, this one I already actually entered over here. I remember, right? Yeah, I have the ISBN 
quantity okay so over here in our for loop we will do the subtotal and what, let me just type it uh, so it's gonna be subtotal because it's gonna be all arrays so subtotal of i from the loop uh, now equals the these are the calculations so this the quantity of books of i multiplied by the unit unit price of i so that calculates the subtotal for one title then it goes to another title and uh, does the subtotal for that so order sales tax We'll, we will accumulate it for the whole order. So we will add plus equal sub total of I multiplied by sales tax. All right, now we now get the running total. Once again, we will inc uh, plus equals and we will add the subtotal of to it because all the subtotals together will give us the running total minus the text so far but the grand total there's only one of them so not plus equals that's gonna be displayed at the end so that simply equals the order sales tax plus the running total if that's all added together so these are our calculations for our for our order so now let's display the order uh let me just paste it i don't i don't have it in inside the for loop so i'm gonna cut that and after this i'm gonna paste it here uh so what do we have we have our quantity but it's not gonna be quantity anymore we're displaying the array value so quantity books because quantity books for the order not quantity from the uh, from the inventory all right so that's why quantity books of i and remember this is on, on in a loop so it displays the first order then it goes to the next index and displays the next order it goes to the next index and the next order and then at the end we will display these uh, as a kind of like a summary of the order just like normally you see it in a store you'll see when we run it so um the same with title this is now this title of index i and price is now called unit price of i and subtotal subtotal of i is now displayed as well now the calculated totals uh, instead of subtotal remember that's the running total now and uh, text is the order sales tax and total is now the grand total and we leave the message thank you for shopping with us and again now we have the uh, uh, process another transaction but we can call the function again instead of uh, see out it we can simply do the same thing like we did before which is the assign it to the message so message now equals process another transaction and we will do i will delete that and we will do the choice now equals the another transaction and pass in the message to it all right so um okay so that's that and uh, so this is my uh, uh, for loop uh, where's the if counter actually I'm sorry the uh, the calculated values and the message 
they display it only once, so they have to be outside of the loop. Otherwise, they will display all uh, with each uh, title. So after we display all these uh, quantities for each other, we will display the summary, which is after the for loop. So this is the and for loop, and this is the and if counter greater than zero condition and uh, yeah that's all uh, let me just add uh, after that see out one uh, empty line and i think we might be ready to actually test this thing so uh, let's see where we are So let's build it. And um, well, it loaded, so no uh, no errors. So we don't have anything in our arrays yet. So I'm going to press two for inventory database and add a book. And I'm gonna add title one as a title, ISBN one as an ISBN, author one, publisher one, and date added to inventory i don't know 5 22 that's today 2016 and i have five uh, uh books in the inventory i'm adding to it and the wholesale price is 100 and the retail price i mean the retail price is 100 and wholesale is 10. and let's add, add, add uh, another book so i'll press 2 again and this time i'm i don't know if you can see that i press 2 and i'm going to do another title so it's gonna uh, be title Two, ISBN two, author two, publisher two, and let's say five twenty three, two thousand sixteen. Added to it, quantity added. Let's say seven, and wholesale price seventy, and retail price seven hundred. Very expensive book. And now let's check our cashier module. So let's go back to our return to main menu, which is five. And let's go to cashier module and ask us for the date so let's just enter the date and ask for the isbn of the book so let's do a wrong isbn let's say isbn 3 which we don't have in our inventory so and it says isbn number was not found so do you want to re-enter an isbn number i was like okay let's do a, a let's do enter date again so 522 2016 i I had to press it twice, so I have to get rid of the one of the uh, C in ignore. But uh, so far, so good. So the ISBN, ISBN 1, and which exists. And when I press enter, you can see it displays the title of the book because it found it and displays the retail price. And I'll ask how many books we want to purchase. Now, our quantity in our inventory is 5. That's what I entered. So if I do 6, it says sorry insufficient quantity in inventory so let's do three and it says okay that's all right and now do you want another order i say yeah sure so uh, let's do the date again 2016 isbn let's do isbn 2 which exists that's the other book that i have there and i have seven quantities so let's do let's just do zero i want to order zero that will show me a message that says please enter a valid quantity but if i enter eight then it says sorry insufficient quantity so let's just do seven all of them and it takes it and do you want another transaction and i'll say no that's it so let's display the order so we ordered three of the title one seven of the title two here's the summary here's the tags and everything and it asks us do you want another transaction and I was like, yeah, okay, I still have two books that I can buy from this one. So let's do that. So uh, I'll do Y and I'll go back to cashier module and it should let me buy two of the title one books. So it's the ISBN one and it found the book and let's try three, which is too many because I already ordered three here. And there's only five together uh, all together in the inventory so if i enter three it says all right sorry insufficient quantity but it should let me enter two and it did uh 
it entered quantity of books to another transaction let's say no and it displays this transaction with the quantity now if i try to order any of the books that's none of them is in inventory anymore so if i go to cashier module and try to enter isbn1 it tell me right away that it's out of stock and it does it says eh, the book is out of stock so it doesn't even let me enter any quantity because it's out of stock the same should be with the isbn2 and it does isbn2 it's out of stock so this seems to be working decently there might be some bugs that we will find later but so far so good uh, the one thing I wanted to do was to remove the C in ignore uh, because it, I, I had to enter uh, press enter twice so I'm gonna remove this one when I entering the date all right so uh, I'm gonna build it save it and as you could see it ran and it seemed it built now okay as well so um, this is the part one of uh, this chapter in the next chapter or in the next video we will do the part two which is gonna be with the reports and we will go over some pointers everyone's favorite subject yeah but till then have a good day and i will see you in the next video take care